In this video, I'm explaining the North America construction framing softwood lumber and panel prices for the end of May 2024. Hello again, everyone. Kata Kostman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, here at the very end of May 2024 to let you know that lumber prices have really not changed much since my last update. So normally, this time of year where we have that uh, middle of spring, coming up to summer, dual holiday, Canada, U.S., with Victoria Day, usually around May 24th in Canada, and Memorial Day in the U.S., sort of intersecting and giving a little bit of an indication to where the market for lumber sales is at, and maybe what we can think we're going to see for the upcoming future. And the activity did not increase. It didn't drop, we didn't have a slowdown, but there was not a bump in demand, which is now at this time of year making the uh, veteran players think we're in the level where we're gonna be. You know, uh, I know that construction activity actually usually happens across North America, you know, now, uh, and so people might say, well, there's still, you know, a lot of summer to go. But usually what happens is builders have already bought the wood that they know that they're going to need for this construction season. Uh, and so would be receiving their deliveries by now. Generally not necessarily ordering now to receive, you know, in six weeks or however long it usually takes for the wood to arrive from the mill to their job site. Okay, and so now as a really quick overview, prices are generally flat uh, from the past couple of weeks. They did drop a little bit. There was some, you know, up and down in various commodities. Madison's tracks 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices. So they don't all move in the same uh, direction at the same time. We cover the entire continent. So we've got the east, the west, the, the north and the south. Uh, now, really important, I think, in addition to this stability of pricing that we're seeing in the past few weeks, hitting the point of one year ago with almost everything. The benchmark Western Spruce 2x4, also the Eastern Spruce 2x4, I think something very important to note, the studs, Western Spruce studs, these prices are literally almost exactly where they were at one year ago, okay? And if you've been following along, you know that the second half of 2023 and so far this year, 2024, has been pretty flat, okay? So in distinction to all of the uh, just wild volatility that we saw for those two and a half years from, you know, 2022 to, from 2021 to 2022, uh, we now have, you know, where people are asking, where are the prices going to land? What's the bottom? You know, when are they going to level off so that we can start to see what uh, we can expect for the future as demand goes up and down, okay? So the combination of the housing starts, which I'm going to do another video uh, briefly on the housing starts and my lumber prices, uh, and the lumber prices themselves, along with other macroeconomic conditions like GDP growth or not growth, uh, interest rates specifically affect the housing market and therefore uh, lumber demand, and all of these other things beginning to see some stability. Uh, and so with the mills, there was uh, more curtailment announcements, but there's also announcements of investment, uh, mill sale, and mill starting up. Uh, my last video, I was talking about the fires. We thankfully in Canada and the Pacific Northwest, there was quite a bit of rain and cooler temperatures. Actually, snow, hail, I don't know, it's May. Like, I can't understand. It's not the same as it used to be 20 years ago. So anyway, the fires uh, quickly when that rain came, when those cooler temperatures came, especially at night, were able to be extinguished and those people were able to go home. 
Uh, one thing that I heard that I think people might want to take a note of, especially if they live in areas uh, of timber, is that they have discovered there were fires burning underground, smoldering underground continually through the winter, which part of the reason why those uh, similar same regions fires flared up again this year. That they flared up in March and April, that's uh, extremely early for what would normally be fire season, normally like July and August when the temperatures are up and the uh, sun is out for so many hours a day and the uh, temperatures don't drop in the evening at night. And there's been sort of drier weather and the forest is drier. Um, so watch out for that because the timber supply and the log supply is one of the main things that affects on the supply side for the sawmills, uh, which of course affects their ability to produce and then to ship lumber. So let's look at some graphs right now. I have a whole bunch I'm just gonna line up real quick because I think when people see what I talk about, the prices in relation to each other, you know, why do I bring up the Douglas fir, which is a coastal species and is used generally in specialty applications, things like that. When I show you these graphs, then you will see because what we want is to give an overview. Yes, of course, there are regional issues and the species that we track, they are regional. However, they are sold across the continent. So the demand goes out into anywhere. Douglas fir is sold into Florida. Douglas fir is sold into New Jersey. So that's why when I show you these, the benchmark items that we talk about, the standard Western spruce, Eastern spruce, Southern pine, two by fours that go into single family housing across Canada and US, as well as these specialty items, you know, the Douglas fir, the studs, like I said, uh, what are those prices doing in relation to each other gives a both regional and national view. I'm also going to touch on some OSB and plywood, so, so stick around because this is going to be good. All right, and here we have that benchmark Western spruce pine fir KD 2x4, number 2 and better, produced out of British Columbia, Alberta, Washington State, Oregon, and a little bit out of Idaho. As you can see, that super high red line from 2022 by the end of June will moderate down and the scale will change and we'll be able to see a little bit better what was the up and down last year. That yellow line looks really flat right now just in relation to that super high scale over on the right. And so for this year you can see the blue line really quite flat and then we did have a drop. The producers were not able to hold off the counter offers from the customers. The secondary suppliers were, the wholesalers were working really hard to sell the little bit of wood that they did have. And so the mills had to drop the price that they were trying to keep around uh, just above 400 per thousand and is now at uh, $384 US per thousand board feet flat for the past few weeks and looking to relatively stay even now into the future, though we don't know if that's going to uh, play out. Here, real quick, we've got the studs. This is what I was talking about. If you look at that pink line from 2022, chopping up and down as the market was trying to find where is the new level. And also even last year, the yellow line was bumping up and down a little bit in the second half. Now you can see the blue line a little bit more of a flat trend for the past few months, giving an indication of where the market is now at. This is the southern pine that I was saying is behaving a little bit differently on the east side than some of the other items. I highlighted that exact same week last year when this price was US 447 per thousand, selling now for 370. So it has bumped up and down during this year, unlike the other items, and also does seem to be reaching perhaps where is the new level that we can consider to be the base. Here we have those six items against each other. Once again, over onto the far right where you have that incredibly high scale during June, that's going to disappear. And the top of that scale is going to be somewhere around 800 or $600. Uh, everybody seems to be in some way 
moving at the same rate except for that top uh, pale blue line, gray line, which is the plywood. And that does move at its own pace because a lot of the uses for plywood don't have anything to do with housing. Here you have the same data as that graph you were just looking at, showing you the price this week compared to one week ago. Really not a lot of change, what I'm saying. There's a bit of stability arriving. We'll see if this is where the prices level off. Probably they will unless something drastic happens either on the supply side with fire or uh, on the demand side with a, an increase in building, which I really doubt we're going to start seeing any time in the next few months. And then if you look over to the right of this table, you can see compared to one month ago, there was a drop, but it's a little bit of a drop compared to the volatility we saw previously. All right. And so that's the hard data. The insight behind the data that we get from our sources, the sawmills and wholesalers across the continent every week, because we publish on, uh, on Thursday evening, we do the update and on Friday or Thursday evening, depending on where they are, subscribers to my dashboard, people who have a login are able to look and see both what I'm showing you where these prices are with the graphs and what I'm explaining now in the commentary about what happened with the market to uh, impact those changes. And so we have, like I said, very uh, stable pricing now compared to this time last year. We have order files at sawmills between two and four weeks. I'm going to say they're probably not four weeks out. However, the mills are not quoting beyond that because once they sell out this wood that they've got at the price that we've established over the past few weeks, they don't know either what's going to happen in June at the end of June. So customers are just in time buying for immediate needs, not stocking up an inventory. Like I've been saying, it hasn't been since for more than one year. Uh, and the mills are also hedging on what's going to happen in the future. And so they're just selling to these immediate needs and not providing any uh, quotes or price list further than four weeks from now. And as you saw from the graph that I was showing you there, the Southern Pine prices on the east side, we use the east side price because as a benchmark, uh, because it is produced on the highest volume out of the uh, Southern Pine Belt, east, west, and central. Those prices are behaving differently are on their own trajectory and have been uh, also at this time last year. There's a few reasons for that. Uh, mainly the timber allocation in the U.S. South is a completely different uh, method than in the Pacific Northwest and uh, Canada in the North. Um, and there has been a mm, oversupply of logs coming into the mills for a couple of years due to the silviculture practices there. The loblolly pine is the largest segment of the southern yellow pine mix. Uh, had been planted uh, a very intensive silviculture practice of thinning, pruning, um, fumigating, and watering uh, came to maturity. It takes 35 years. And so there was a glut of logs coming into the mills even more than the uh, past couple of years. So that relationship between what the uh, Southern Pine sawmill and manufacturers need to pay for the logs in relation to what they're charging for their lumber, slightly different from what's been happening in the north for the eastern and western spruce, regardless of what's going on with the housing, okay? And so otherwise, uh, like I said, no one's stocking on inventory. Customers are doing just in time buying. Everybody's really hedging on what they uh, want to see happen in the coming months and not taking any chances with stocking up too much and getting stuck with uh, inventory at a higher price than where the wood will be selling in two months. Doubtful the price will drop, but if it's not going to rise, why would anyone stock up? It's basic, right? And so uh, this week, producers were uh, offering some month-end discounts, meaning 
in some cases they did sell below print and we are print Madison's it's cash. The cash market print uh, is what the wood is selling for FOB mill, as opposed to let's say futures, which is uh, futures uh, and is a hedge. So not a lot of particularly optimistic sentiment going on on futures either. So if you like what you see here, subscribe on YouTube. So you will be notified when I make another video, click like, so this awesome content will be recommended to other viewers. And if you need to see more, if this is interesting to you and it's the little snapshots that we do here on YouTube or for the website is not enough, go on my website. The link is here in the caption and you can fill out the form to see a sample. And we will send you the list of the 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices that we track. And we will send you the commentary explaining why those prices have changed. And then if you like that, you can subscribe to the dashboard where you will be able to log in every Thursday evening, Friday morning and see what the new prices are for that week.